Welcome to another edition of Insights. My name is Marty Guthmiller, CEO at Orange City Area Health System. Today, we will be focusing on varicose veins, something that many people experience as adults and the solutions that we offer at Orange City Area Health System Surgery Clinic. Today joining me is Dr. Brent Nykamp, one of our three general surgeons. Dr. Nykamp, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate no that. Thank you for having me. Could you talk a little bit about varicose veins in terms of what they are and what might cause them? Mm -hmm. uh, varicose veins are, um, a, as you mentioned, a fairly common problem that we see in a lot of age groups. Mm -hmm. In a very general terms, they're dilated veins that people see on the outside of their legs. They can be part of a larger problem um, called chronic venous insufficiency, where you can have uh, symptoms that can be related to varicose veins, but don't always have the visible veins as well. Now, the visible veins themselves are, are typically dilated veins. Oftentimes, they're veins where the valves have failed, and uh, they're no longer doing their job of helping to deliver blood back up the leg uh, to the heart. We can also see other uh, conditions or other symptoms uh, from this condition called spider veins, which mm -hmm. are smaller veins, but also visible. Uh, can also have uh, swelling of the lower leg um, and in more advanced cases, actually ulcerations of the skin. As you mentioned, this is a fairly common problem and we mm -hmm. see it in a number of people and a number of age groups. One of the risk factors for it is being in a job where you stand for a long amount of time mm -hmm. or you're in a job where you're seated for a long amount of time. Um, if you're up and around and moving, getting up and down, that's good for your legs. We also see it in um, probably more commonly in women. Uh, pregnancy is a, a risk factor for this. We see it in some people who have a family history of this. Um, and there's other contributing factors, uh, injuries, obesity, that sort of thing. Um, as I mentioned, in addition to the, the visible varicose veins, some of these people with venous reflux will have other symptoms, um, swelling of their legs, itchiness of their legs, some skin changes, can have restless leg problems, can have fatigue. Um, so are those indications probably something where it's not cosmetic? Because sometimes you think of varicose veins mm -hmm. and getting them fixed as vein, as in being vein, mm -hmm. not as in veins carrying blood. Correct. But it really, so it'd be those particular stages, pain, swelling, that uh, it, it's past the cosmetic stage. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the primary focus of our practice here is not so much um, cosmetic improvement, although okay. that oftentimes comes along with In improving uh, the symptoms and functionality for people. So you, you and your fellow surgeons utilize a process called venous, mm -hmm. right? V-N-U-S. Mm -hmm. Could you talk to us about venous a little bit and describe what that procedure is? Yeah. So that is a procedure where uh, again, after a, a fairly thorough workup to ensure that we're treating the right problem with the right uh, treatment, um, it's a procedure that uh, destroys the lining of one of the superficial veins in the legs. It's all, oftentimes a culprit for varicose veins and venous insufficiency. It's a procedure that we do in the clinic with the patient uh, awake. Uh, it's done under local anesthetic, and it's a procedure where a catheter is placed up the uh, insufficient vein uh, under completely done under ultrasound guidance. Mm -hmm. And then local anesthetic is injected around the catheter and the catheter uses uh, radio frequency energy to generate heat and to destroy the vein. Perfect. How long does that take? What, how long does that? Uh, it varies anywhere from a very straightforward, uh, one might be a half hour to, to an hour to. And it's done more. here in the clinic. Correct. You don't yep. have to be in the OR or Correct. Any, any place like that. Yep. <clears throat> Does insurance typically cover these? Typically, yes. And uh, we follow <clears throat> follow their uh, protocols. It's usually covered. How would somebody go about scheduling one of these? So the first step would be either be talking to your primary care provider or contacting our office directly. And um, the first step after, after making an appointment is that we'll see the patient, we'll do an exam, <clears throat> uh, we'll take a history and see if the symptoms in the exam fit uh, with venous insufficiency and varicose vein disease. If it does, the next step would be scheduling a duplex ultrasound, and that's an ultrasound that's done right here in Orange City uh, that's specific to look for venous reflux as well as a few other things in the leg uh, to make sure that, that they are a candidate for treatment. 
And then following that, if, if things all look like it is venous reflux disease, we typically start with conservative measures, um, and that would include using compression uh, hose and compression stockings and uh, anything else that we think might, might benefit. And then if that is uh, unsuccessful, then we would talk about surgical options or, or a venous procedure. So the first step in all this is, I'm gonna get really basic here, 737-2000 mm -hmm. to talk to your family practice doctor. Correct. Or if you wanna go direct to the source right here, 737-5317 will get you to the, to the front desk. So 5317. Correct. Anything else that you'd like to add today regarding varicose veins? Since we're on the subject. Since we're on the subject and <laughs> summer's coming and we'll eventually be wearing shorts. Um, no, like I said, uh, you know, give us a give us a call if you have questions uh, or talk to your primary care provider and we'll see what we can do for it. Great. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as well.